In this video, we're going to give you a quick guide to Aspire's interface. When you first start the program, you'll see what you can see here on the screen. Over on the left, we have a panel where I can access to create a new file, open an existing file, or I can click to access the four most recently opened files from this list. We'll go ahead and say create a new file. Within the job setup menu that appears, you have the option to set the size and thickness of your material, the origin position, the modeling resolution, whether you want to work in inches or millimeters, and also the appearance of your standard model. If we click OK, that'll take us into the main interface for the program. At the top of the window, as you would see with most Windows software, you have these words, and if you click on any of these words, that'll give you access to a drop-down menu. From the drop-down menu, you can click on a choice in here, or if you see an option that has an arrow over on the right, that means that it's going to supply you with another further drop-down menu to make more choices. In addition, in these menus, you'll see that some of the options have the shortcut key displayed. The shortcut key tells you what you would have to hit on the keyboard in order to activate that particular function without having to go into the menu. Learning to use the shortcut keys can be a very good way to become much faster and more proficient with the software. Now, the controls for the tools in Aspire are accessed through various tabs. The tabs are essentially reference a menu. So here you can see down at the bottom, we currently have the drawing tab selected. I can see that there is a, a panel here that I can click on, which will let me access the modeling tab. And the toolpaths tab is currently undisplayed over on the right here. And you can see as I move the mouse over this area where it says toolpaths, that pops out and I can see the toolpath icons. For any of these tabs, if you want to pin them in place, you can come up to the little icon for the pin, you can click on it and it'll pin that out. As well as being able to pin these tabs in place by using the pin icon and hovering over the um, flaps that you see here and down here or selecting on them, it's also possible to use shortcut keys to move between the drawing and modeling um, tabs and the toolpath tabs. When you have the Drawing and Modeling tab open, you can hit F12 to undisplay those and display the Toolpath tab. And to go back, you can hit F11 on your keyboard, and that will display the Drawing and Modeling tab. There are also icons to go between these two tabs. If I click on the icon here to switch to Toolpath tab, it will do the same. And then on the Toolpath tab, I have an icon to switch back. To move between the Drawing and Modeling tab, you've seen me click at the bottom here between the uh, two tabs. It's also possible to double click in any space where there isn't an icon to move between these two tabs. If we double click up here, then I go into the Modeling tab. If I double click here, we go back. And so that can be a very quick way for you to move between the Drawing and Modeling tabs in Aspire. If you have a high resolution monitor, or you have a two monitor setup, you may want to actually detach these menus completely and drag them off onto that second monitor or onto a different part of your screen to increase the work area within Aspire. You can do that by clicking on the top part of the menu, then click to select it and just drag that menu away so that it becomes a separate window that you can move around and still access the icons from on a second monitor. You can see that the Drawing and Modeling tab are still within this particular menu here. To put that back into place, I'll just click again and drag it back until it snaps, and then it will resume its original position. It's possible to also detach the Modeling tab completely from the Drawing tab. If we click and drag that, you'll see it separates into a separate menu. And again, it's possible for me to move this around, put it onto a second monitor, or if we need to put it back, we can click and come back up to the top here, and then we'll just go back to having our drawing and modeling tab together in the same part of the interface. It's possible to do the same operation with the toolpaths tabs as well. We go across here, we could just click on the top area. Uh, if we pin it in place first, and just drag that into a new position, or we can drag that back into its original placement here and let go and it will resume its position in the interface. 
Now on these different tabs, if we start here with the drawing tab, we can see some of the icons that we have available for certain functions within Aspire. At the top of the drawing tab, I have all my file operations to open files, to save files, to cut, copy and paste and import certain types of data. Then we have our view control icons. Then we come down to the ability to create vectors using some standard tools, polylines, things like the text tool, and also some editing for the text in there as well. Then we come down to the area where I have the ability to edit those vector objects. Then we have an area where we can align those objects. And finally, we have the layer control. All of these things will be dealt with in much more detail throughout the rest of the tutorials. On the modeling tab, we can see at the top here, I have the component tree. I'm able to extend and reduce the size of that tree, depending how many components I have in it, by clicking on this divider and just dragging it up and down with the mouse. Then we have the modeling tools for both creating and making edits to our three dimensional components. And below that, we have editing tools um, in order to move and align and manipulate those components, as well as more icons to control the view. If we go over now to the Toolpaths tab, so let's click on F12, we can see that here we have at the top um, the area where when we start to create toolpaths, we'll see them listed. Again, I can stretch this much as I can do with the component list. And then below that, we have all the different icons that pertain to the different toolpath operations. And again, all these functions will be dealt with in much more detail in future tutorials. Now we've looked at the various menus and tools that are available and their positions in the interface. Let's just go back to the Drawing and Modeling tab, hit F11 on the keyboard, and we'll spend a moment to consider our main work area, which is in the middle of the part here. This is where we're going to see all our 2D data in the 2D view. The 2D view is currently selected, and we can see that up the top here. It'll have the name of the file on this tab, and next to it is a tab called 3D view. If we click on that, it takes us into the part of the interface that's going to display our 3D model and the toolpaths that we create um, within the software. Now you saw there how we can go from 2D to 3D and have them come up and dominate the screen. It's also sometimes very useful for me to be able to see both the 2D and the 3D. To do that, I have some icons here where I can tile the windows vertically and horizontally. So if we click on this one here, I tile so that I get the 2D on the left, the 3D on the right. If we click on this one here, then I'm going to get it at the top and the bottom. And there are shortcut keys to access those two. Page up will tile the windows vertically and page down on the keyboard will tile them horizontally. That can also be accessed through the view drop down menu at the top here, we can see there. More specific information about working with the 2D and the 3D views will be covered in some of the other overview tutorials. We want to conclude this overview by highlighting some of the additional places where you can get online help and support. So hopefully you've discovered already that there are extensive video tutorials and getting started guides available on your installed DVD. These take you through the concepts, ideas and processes that underpin modelling and machining in Aspire. But there are also additional help uh, options that you can get from within Aspire itself to take you through the detail of each form uh, and option available. Your starting point is the help menu item on the top main menu here. And the first item in that list is help contents. If I click that, it opens up your online reference manual. And this is literally a 300 page PDF document that details every feature and every option in Aspire. Obviously, to navigate that, you're going to need some help. And so our starting point here is the navigation homepage. Uh, and what that is, is an overview of the whole interface laid out for you so that you can see all the major groups of tools and options that are available on your interface. Uh, and if you need to know about any of these tools, you start by clicking on the area of the interface where the tool is. So for example, if I choose the modeling tools uh, tool set here, I click on that, it takes me to the chapter all about modeling tools. Each of the chapters is also headed 
by a, an image that details each of the tools that are covered in this chapter. And these are hot linked too, so I can roll over any of the tools on the modeling tool section. So for example, the create shape tool here, click on it and I'll be taken to the create shape uh, entry in the manual. As you can see, this details absolutely every uh, item on the create shape form. So you can look up uh, each of the elements that you're interested in and get your help about uh, what they're for and how they work. To get back to your navigation homepage, you'll find a green highlighted link at the foot of every page in the manual. Simply click on that and it'll take you back to the interface homepage. On the left hand side here, you'll see as well that the manual is also um, indexed by heading in this conventional way. And you can use little pluses and minuses here to look at the contents of each chapter and click on any of the items to leap to the entry about that chapter. Um, and OK, so that's the online reference guide. I close that down and we go back to the help menu. We can see here as a second link to download support materials. This will actually take you via the Internet to the Vectric support pages. And here you'll find online versions of some of the videos and tutorials that have been provided on the DVD uh, and also some additional support materials as and when they become available. Uh, below that is the online frequently asked questions section where we try and detail things that the support guys get asked a lot uh, to save you time and also uh, a link to the forum which um, if you've not been to already is really a valuable resource where you can ask questions and discuss topics with other members of the Vectric community. The what's new link here is to another PDF document and is aimed directly at people who are upgrading from previous versions of Aspire so it takes you through the specific uh, new features uh, changes since the previous version or enhancements to existing features for those people who are already largely familiar with the software. The post-processing editing guide is uh, an advanced guide. Again, it's a PDF manual, uh, but it takes you through uh, the principles of writing your own or modifying the existing post processors uh, to operate with a new machine or a, a bespoke machine. Uh, as I say, that's generally for advanced users only. But the final link here is a really valuable one for everybody. And this is the check for updates link. And this will automatically launch a little application now that goes to the Vectric uh, website and it checks to see if you're running the very latest version of the software. If you're not, it will automatically download it for you uh, and you can install it. So um, we do recommend that you visit this uh, little link uh, periodically and it's the best method if you hear there has been an update to automatically go and grab the software to, to make sure you're running the latest and greatest versions. OK, so hopefully that's been a useful overview and uh, good luck with using the software.